students welcome to my class today we will study analytical chemistry which is really one of the most important chapters of the both syllabus and i will make sure that your concept is clear and also the study of the chapter becomes easier and simpler most importantly don't forget to check out the description box where you would get the notes of this chapter so let's not waste time and start with the chapter analytical chemistry this chapter basically deals with identification of unknown substances so to identify the cation we have to go by certain chemical tests which will include sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide so using these two alkalies we will go by chemical reactions where you have to complete the equations balance them and then observe so by observation that is the color and the solubility of the precipitates form we will identify the unknown substance and i will also discuss the question answers which you are definitely going to get in your term papers as well as the board paper so to start with some ions are colorless and some are colored here i have written some examples of colorless ions they are sodium ions potassium ions aluminum ions calcium ions magnesium ion lead ion and ammonium ion there are some ions also that are colorless like chloride carbonate sulfate and sulfide ions some of the colored ions are cupric to cu2 plus you know that copper is a bivalent element cupric 1 cupric 2 you all have learned the valencies very well so cupric ion is blue in color nickel ni2 plus is green in color ferrous fe2 plus is light green in color ferric iron fe3 plus is brown in color manganese mn2 plus is light pink in color chromium cr3 plus is dark green in color at the same time chromate cro42 minus is yellow in color dichromate cr2o72 minus is orange in color cobalt co2 plus is pink violet that's a very pinkish color violet tinge permanganate mno4 minus is actually pink or you can say purple in color now let us start with the identification of the cation the metallic radical to go by we first prepare the solution of the unknown substance that is the salt given to us the salt solution 
As I have already said that the reagents used are sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide which we add dropwise in the beginning and then in excess so that we can make observation of the color of the precipitate formed and whether the precipitate is soluble or insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide. And finally, we make the deduction as to which cation it is based on the observations. Let us now take up different cations one by one. Let the first one be zinc ion. Zinc is amphoteric in nature. If you remember, standard ion we had studied. An element which can react with acid as well as base is known as amphoteric. About which I will teach you later in the other half of this chapter as well as in another chapter. So, let's start with the reaction of zinc ion. Actually, any zinc salt can be zinc chloride, can be zinc nitrate, could be zinc sulfate, a zinc salt. So, we make the salt solution first and then add the reagent dropwise and then in excess to check the color and the solubility. So if zinc chloride is the salt taken and sodium hydroxide is added dropwise, then the reaction will be zinc hydroxide plus sodium chloride. How to remember the reaction? Learning will be difficult. If you remember the types of reactions we have done in standard 9, the double decomposition reaction under which comes precipitation reaction as zinc hydroxide is a precipitate. So what happens? Sodium chloride, zinc hydroxide, double decomposition reaction which if you remember AB plus CD gives you CB plus AD. So here sodium chloride and zinc hydroxide. Now we balance the reaction. This is balanced now. We now need to know the color of this zinc hydroxide which is white gelatinous Sorry, gel kind. It is not white, just white. It will be a gel kind of white PPT which is soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. So when zinc hydroxide reacts with sodium hydroxide in excess, you get a soluble salt which is sodium zincate and you get water. We balance it. This. And this is one soluble salt. So the observation is we get white gelatinous precipitate on adding few drops of sodium hydroxide and on adding excess of sodium hydroxide we get the precipitate dissolved soluble. If a zinc salt, now I have taken zinc nitrate, is reacted with ammonium hydroxide, the reaction is again a precipitation reaction to give zinc hydroxide plus ammonium nitrate. Zinc hydroxide ammonium nitrate when we balance it. This is the equation. Zinc hydroxide is a precipitate and the color 
will be white gelatinous. This white gelatinous precipitate of zinc hydroxide when reacted with excess of ammonium hydroxide will give you tetramin zinc hydroxide and you get water to balance it okay here this is soluble which is tetramin zinc hydroxide solution so soluble soluble that means zinc salt with sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide in drops will give you white gelatinous precipitate and in excess will give you dissolved precipitate. The next salt that is copper. Any copper salt now copper solution salt solution whatever copper salt you have got copper chloride copper sulfate copper nitrate salt solution and few drops of sodium hydroxide and few drops of ammonium hydroxide both will give you pale blue precipitate of copper hydroxide with sodium hydroxide it is insoluble and with ammonium hydroxide it will be soluble. Let's see. So copper nitrate with sodium hydroxide will give you copper hydroxide plus sodium nitrate. Let's balance it. Okay. Here is the precipitate and the color is pale blue precipitate but this precipitate in excess of sodium hydroxide is insoluble that means there is no reaction to it on the other hand when copper nitrate salt solution with ammonium hydroxide, you get copper hydroxide plus ammonium nitrate. Let's balance it. Done. Precipitate. Pale blue precipitate. This precipitate, this copper hydroxide with ammonium nitrate when into it excess of ammonium hydroxide is added the reaction is tetramine copper nitrate plus water we balance it there and pale blue precipitate dissolves to give inky or you can even say deep blue coloration that is deep blue color solution so you don't have precipitates anymore you have turned the precipitates into solution but the color is deep blue or you can even say inky blue. It's a complex salt but soluble. The next salt that we take is a ferrous salt. Ferrous salt with sodium hydroxide and ammonium hydroxide in drops will give you precipitate that is dirty green precipitate 
and is insoluble in the excess of sodium hydroxide as well as ammonium hydroxide. Let's see. So we have ferrous chloride plus sodium hydroxide precipitation reaction as it goes. So let's write it is FeOH whole twice ferrous plus sodium chloride. Let's balance it. Okay. Ferrous hydroxide is a precipitate and the color is dirty green color. When this ferrous hydroxide is reacted with excess of sodium hydroxide, no reaction takes place. That means the precipitate do not dissolve. Ferrous sulfate with ammonium hydroxide will give you ferrous hydroxide plus ammonium sulfate. Here I have taken a different salt just to show that the observation remains the same. Let's balance it. There. FeOH hold twice, so dirty green precipitate. Here also, with excess of ammonium hydroxide, the precipitate does not dissolve. The next salt is a ferric salt. You can take any ferric salt, ferric sulfate, ferric nitrate. I have used ferric chloride in both the cases just to show that the reaction remains all the same. Here the color of the precipitate will be reddish brown. So if we complete the equations, it will be FeOH whole trice being a ferric salt. Uh, balancing it will be this and a precipitate. So the color is reddish brown you have to identify by the color of the precipitate which I was explaining it to you dirty green of course it is ferrous reddish brown of course it is ferric these precipitates these products when further reacted with excess of sodium hydroxide the precipitates do not dissolve it goes with ammonium hydroxide, salt solution, ammonium hydroxide, here's the reaction, ferric with ammonium chloride. If we have to balance it, it's a precipitate, reddish brown in color which will not dissolve in excess of ammonium hydroxide. So if there is a question how will you identify whether it's ferrous chloride or ferric chloride, we don't identify things on the basis of color. We go chemically using chemical tests. So your answer would be when sodium hydroxide is added to both separately, the one which gives insoluble dirty green precipitate is ferrous chloride and the one which gives reddish brown insoluble precipitates is ferric chloride. I will discuss more questions about different types of examples, observations, differences, identifications and so on. Later, let me complete the chapter first. Next comes is calcium salt. Any calcium salt, I've taken calcium chloride with sodium hydroxide, will give you calcium hydroxide precipitation reaction with sodium chloride, sodium chloride, calcium hydroxide. Balance it, very important. If you don't balance, you don't get that one mark during the exam. This is a precipitate which is white 
in color with further excess of sodium hydroxide it is sparingly soluble almost insoluble so we say sparingly soluble but sodium chloride with ammonium hydroxide no precipitate formed as sodium chloride is fairly soluble in ammonium hydroxide so no precipitate so if you are given two salts zinc chloride calcium chloride zinc chloride will give you we discussed just now is white gelatinous which is soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide calcium chloride will be white precipitate insoluble or you can take ammonium hydroxide as well the zinc salt will give you white gelatinous precipitate and will be soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide whereas the calcium salt will give no precipitate now the next salt is lead salt here we have taken lead chloride reacting with sodium hydroxide with few drops and the reaction is formation of lead hydroxide plus nacl we balance it <coughs> and this is precipitate which is white in color so this white precipitate of lead when now reacting with excess of sodium hydroxide gives you soluble salt that is a complex salt but soluble with water balance it so we saw that the lead salt with sodium hydroxide with few drops will give you white precipitate this white precipitate dissolves when it reacts with excess of sodium hydroxide but the same lead chloride with ammonium hydroxide the reaction is again precipitation reaction double decomposition so we get lead hydroxide plus ammonium chloride and here we balance we get precipitate white white but with excess of ammonium hydroxide the precipitates are insoluble so we have done with six salts and now ammonium salt when reacts with sodium hydroxide we get a salt we get water and a gas colorless gas so basically any ammonium salt with alkali sodium hydroxide will give you salt water and ammonia more detail about what are the types of ammonium salt that will give you ammonia gas we will do it in another chapter now we just understand that ammonium chloride with sodium hydroxide will give you sodium chloride water and ammonia gas which is colorless it has got a pungent characteristic odor it will turn red moist litmus blue it will turn the nestlers reagent brown 
and a glass rod dipped in conch hcl will give you dense white fumes about all these confirmatory tests of the gas we will discuss in the chapter where there is identification of gases as for now you need to remember the equation and the reaction mechanism now we come to the types of elements which we know as metals non metals metalloids inert all this time we now study about amphoteric about which a very little we have done it last year these are zinc aluminium and lead so what basically amphoteric means is that these metals will react with acid as well as a base as we know that any metal when reacts with oxygen gives you metallic oxide and a metallic oxide with water will give you a base metallic hydroxide and they will all react with acid but these three will react with bases as well therefore they are amphoteric in nature and their metallic hydroxides are amphoteric hydroxides and their oxides are amphoteric oxides which will react with the bases to give you salt and water here there are few equations which i have noted down and i will show how they react to give you not the normal salt but a complex salt and the basic difference is as i said the metals will react with acids but the amphoteric metals will react with bases as well as acids about acids we will do the reactions in the acid bases salt chapter here with the base so zinc with sodium hydroxide will give you sodium zincate in a 2 set in o2 plus hydrogen because it is metal metal with dilute acid gives you salt and hydrogen so metal with base is giving you salt and hydrogen gas now to balance it this so this is sodium zinc it let with sodium hydroxide here let me remind you one thing it should be hot and concentrated hot and concentrated so the alkali uh, amphoteric reacting with the alkali will be hot and concentrated so every time we need heat plus conch koh or any oh so it will be heat and conch for all the equations so we go by the product lead with sodium hydroxide is giving you sodium plumbite plus hydrogen gas let me balance it so it is sodium plumbite similarly zinc with potassium hydroxide will give you potassium zincate plus hydrogen balance it and lead with potassium hydroxide will give you potassium plumbite k2 pbo2 
plus hydrogen. So these are all hot concentrated giving you salt and hydrogen. Now aluminium with sodium hydroxide hot concentrated will give you sodium meta aluminate any AlO2 plus hydrogen gas. Let me balance it. There we go. That is sodium meta aluminate. Now aluminium with potassium hydroxide will give you potassium meta aluminate hydrogen gas and we balance it. Now these equations were metals reacting with bases. As I told you that these metallic oxides are amphoteric oxides which will react with a base to give you salt and water and the base will be hot concentrated. Now we see that the colors like zinc oxide is white in color, zinc hydroxide white in color, lead oxide yellow in color, aluminium oxide white in color. They will all change into colorless solutions because the salts formed are colorless. They are water soluble and water is formed. So let's see the reaction. Zinc oxide with sodium hydroxide will give you sodium zincate plus water. Balance it. Sodium hydroxide will give you sodium zincate plus water. Balance it. Lead oxide with sodium hydroxide will give you salt plus water. Alumina white in color Al2O3 will give you salt plus water. Aluminium hydroxide with sodium hydroxide will also give you sodium meta aluminate plus water balanced zinc oxide with potassium hydroxide will give you potassium zincate salt plus water. Similarly zinc hydroxide will also give you salt plus water. Lead oxide will give you Potassium plumbate plus water. Okay. And aluminium oxide will also give you salt plus water. Aluminium hydroxide is also giving you salt plus water which you must have learnt by now. So many similar equations.
this tree. So these were the reactions and all the details about the chapter, the behavior of the salt with the base, some of the metals, metallic hydroxides, metallic oxides with the base. So this was the lecture video of the chapter analytical chemistry. I hope you like the video. Please stay tuned for the question and answer video which would consist of some challenging questions which would further strengthen your concept. Lastly, do hit the like button, share and subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified about the upcoming awesome lectures.